there's so much going on i got i'm so behind and stuff right now i shouldn't see that's what happens when i work out brian i go to the gym for an hour and a half and socialize for another hour and a half okay so i go to the gym after i work out Patrick, your connection is not good. Uh, How about now? Bella, are we robbing you of your beach time right now? No. That was yesterday. Yesterday was beach day. Today's run club day. You can't do both. Oh, okay. Why you know, you, you can't both? go to the beach. Because by the time you're done beaching in the way that it's meant to be done, you need to just take a nap and re rehydrate. <laughs> at the beach. What? You're not napping at the beach? No, you are. And I actually learned the other day, this is my toxic trait, is when I'm warm, I have to take a nap. It doesn't really matter. Like, I could be in the car, and I'm warm. I'm like, oh, gosh, passenger princess, need to take a nap. Could be at the pool, could be at the beach. If I'm warm, I'm just, it's nap time. Well, I, I would venture to say there are a lot more uh, toxic traits that you could uh, prefer not to <laughs> in that one. Sure. I hope so. <laughs> Very true. Oh, man. Uh, God, I feel like we have so much to go over. So this is kind of like, a, um, yeah, catching up with friends. Kind of like our, maybe I guess our little news type thing. Basically talking about the week that was and the week that is. So recapping you know, stuff that happened this past week that we probably didn't hit on a show or not. And then also looking ahead at like stuff that happened like today, you know, we got the open work uh, quarterfinals team quarterfinals kicks off today. Workouts were released. We'll, we'll preview that, but uh, we'll talk about a bunch of stuff. So this has been a busy week, which is really surprising since, you know, it was kind of, you know, there was like a gap there between the open and quarterfinals, but we have a lot of stuff to talk about besides a quarterfinal, but what do you guys want to start off with? Oh, man. Talk? Bella, did you uh, did you keep up to date with um, anything that was going on over the weekend, whether it was the crown out in Spain, the reps ahead, anything like that? I was trying to keep up with everything. I actually had a busy weekend here with Hybricon games, which is my yeah. my topic. Yeah, I was I worked Hybricon games. So that was fun. That was not for teens. I mean, technically, I guess it could. They don't have any age divisions. Um, so that's something newer. It's not technically CrossFit either. So it's. So it feels like anything, that, anything that's going on fitness and activity related in San Diego that you're involved in it. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Jeez, uh, it's, a, it's actually cool to see because obviously last year you traveled a ton and this year yeah. you know, you've made a move, but it seems like you're finding a lot of opportunities where you live to get involved in a variety of different kind of local things. I would say so. I think last year was the, okay, you're saying yes to everything. What can you do? Where can you go? What does that look like? How many people can you like meet and bring into your life? And then this year it's a little bit different. It's how can you invest in the people that you already know and the relationships you already have? And so I think there's, there's value to both. You know, you have to meet new people. You have to go take opportunities when you get them. But then after you do that, you can't always just try to be everywhere at once. Then you're not really giving yourself to anybody. You're just kind of, you're there. And then your quality of work is meh. And then the relationships you have are eh, because you're just trying to do too much. So that's the approach I'm taking this year is investing in the people, the events, the brands, everybody that's already been invested in me. And then when newer things come along, I have the space to like bring them in because I know I can. So it's been definitely, I would say the move here has been fun. The events that I get to go to this year are fun. They're different, confirmed for some really good ones. New brand partners coming in. I mean, it's it was a good move for sure. <laughs> yeah, it seems, it seems that way. And beach days. Beach days. You're so right. My job is beach here, kind of. So. <laughs> well, uh, Patrick, let's just start with uh, with the crown because we, you know, we've been talking about that. You've been working on that, and I and I know that uh, Spin put out an article just kind of uh, updating people on who the winners were. Um, I had uh, talked to Singleton a little bit via WhatsApp about the the competition overall. He said his biggest takeaway, actually, and you know, you know, if you don't know John Singleton, by the way, he's been around in the CrossFit space forever. He was on with Savan, I think, last week, maybe even during yeah. the competition. 
uh, Savan dubbed him the international man of culture. Uh, well-traveled, well-experienced in the sport of CrossFit, but it was kind of cool. He said that uh, one of the biggest um, impressions he had coming out of the weekend was how well the entire group just like got along with each other. I mean, when they were time to compete, they competed, but the environment that uh, my understanding of what he's trying to create for them there is a really unique opportunity. Um, that picture in the middle, that's the male field, six competitors in the female field five or six competitors. It was supposed to be six and six. Maybe one person didn't show up, but it's a small group of people that are invited to come compete there. Uh, they have plenty of workouts to do, but they're spread out over the course of four days, I believe, maybe two workouts per day. Uh, and so there are other opportunities for the group to kind of uh, get together, do some things, uh, get to know each other. And he said that in addition to just being impressed with the athletes, that he was impressed with the camaraderie and just they were having a good time there. Yeah, that's kind of par for the course from uh, – from. it's actually started in 2019 because of COVID. He kind of rebranded it. Uh, they took a couple of years off, and then he came back last year with it, and uh, it was a smaller group last year. Um, and uh, I think it's just a cool experience. Um, we Obviously, we've talked to John about this. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to John about that because I was able to send an uh, uh, help an athlete get there who actually podium, so it was really cool. Probably the – the most tan woman from Norway, <laughs> um, she finished third. But, um, yeah, it just seems like a really cool event. John actually invited us to come out. Uh, we weren't able to do so. But before we actually talk about the event, I wanted to say that this event is where we got our friends of the week from. So, you know, a lot of stuff going on. But, uh, yeah, we decided uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the friend, or friends of the week. It's basically a weekly award. We're we're just recognizing, trying to recognize like top performers, not just in CrossFit, but just fitness in general. Um, yeah, like, um, you know, I've been paying attention to High Rocks and some other things, um, but um, yeah, these are this week's friends of the week, and they were the winners of the crown. So you can say that the new king or newly crowned king and queen, and they're both from Iceland. So if you did, uh, you, see the, did you see the delivery of the crowns that they had? No, Either I you, didn't. Is it on their Instagram? Well, John comes out with the, the crown for the king, and then Jacqueline Dahlstrom comes out with the crown for the queen, and the other kids are kind of standing around. But they were, they were like, you know, carrying them on a tray, but the tray was a pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome is that? That is cool. That is cool. But both but, of uh, these, both of the winners here, Bjarni and Björgos, are from Iceland. Snorri uh, Baron, of course, is like totally plugged into, you know, a lot of stuff that's going on in the world of fitness in general. And of course, within Iceland specifically being from there himself. And he had put a post up congratulating them and basically uh, inducting the new, you know, the new, what would you call it, the class of uh, up and coming crossfitters from Iceland. And I asked him about these two and he said, well, Bergos, of course, you know, you're going to probably know more about her. And I think this was, he felt like this was a, expected result for her but Bjarni I think even surprised him a little bit uh, I didn't know all of the teenagers that were competing there but I probably would have picked Hugo uh, Jansen out of Sweden yep. um, podiumed at the CrossFit Games competed at the IF3 World Championships in Vancouver he trains at the Alekos lifting complex with a, a lifting club in Sweden um, but uh, I think a little bit surprising to story too is Bjarni to take the win here and both him and Bergos won it in kind of a convincing fashion yeah, um, Bjarni, he actually, he won, they both each won five events, uh, and um, they're just two two different ways they won it. Like, Burgos, uh, was it Burgos? Yeah. she um, She's known more as a power output athlete, and we saw that at Wadapalooza, Tier Wadapalooza. Uh, I believe you actually, were Bella, were you at that stage announcing that? I don't think so. Okay, but she finished fifth. You know, in the elite division, with you know, we're talking some heavy hitters there, like Danny Spiegel finished second. I think Julia Hannaford finished won it, but she finished fifth in that event. So, what a way to start off, you know, first major competition. And she's a games veteran in terms of the team division. She finished third last year, uh, behind Lucy McGonigal. And this year, prior to this, she finished first, tied for first with Kendall Gilmore, uh, with um in the open for the 16 and 17 year old division. So yeah, you like, you're saying she's more well-known the five events. She won they are more power output. Uh, there was the lifting event that she won. It was a, uh, I believe a 
clean and a front squat. Um, and she did uh, 105 kilos, kilograms. So that's roughly 234 pounds. And then, um, huh? Bella's got it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's her war, that's a warm up. That's our warm up weight. Um, and then she also won an event. It was a push a push pull sled event with a prowler uh, that was indoors on a, a, a that C twenty three CrossFit gym they have there. She won um, she won that event. And then you know some of the kind of cross basic CrossFit work. The final event was actually a repeat sixteen point five. If you guys don't remember that, I remember it because yeah, there's a, a shit ton of burpees burpees over the bar it was thrusters and burpees starting i believe 28 was it 28 all the way to i think it started at 21 and went down might have been yeah and it went down by three it's like 21 18 yeah uh yeah i remember my back blew out in that one but she won that event that was a final uh workout but she won five workouts bjarni he actually surprised me because one i don't know much about him but he showed he won a different way. He won most of the events that there was aerobic capacity. Uh, he won the run, which Brian, uh, we were talking about prior to this, it was a uh, 2.7 kilometers, but it was all uphill. It was like 200 meters of elevation chain. And then he came back and he won the rowing event. And then he won a chipper. He row, Bella. Gnarly. <laughs> and then he won uh, a group, the chipper. Which was started off. Uh, it was on the beach, and it was a grueling chipper. Uh, it was a, uh, I believe, it was a, a dumbbell chipper. And then, um, then he won this one event. It was a second to last event. It was workout nine, where it was essentially just machines. It was, uh, I think, ended up being a combined three k run on an air runner. Oh, he also won the. Well, I said he won the run. Two uh, k on the um, ski erg, or one k on the ski erg, and two k on a biker and yeah. So, you know, this, they both train out, I believe out of Reykjavik. So, um, yeah, but so it's, it's, like, it's a cool competition they put on because they're able to use the elements there. That run is like through a Canyon course, mm -hmm. uh, actually Singleton sent me like his Strava, the data for it, which is how we were able to know it. They, they, they took him in a boat out into the ocean and they said, okay, or jump off swim. the boat, swim to, swim to shore. First one back is the winner of the event. <laughs> on 600 meters in an ocean swim you know and you hear and they have some of these kind of specialty style events they have a you know a weightlifting event they have a dumbbell chipper they had an, i think a gymnastics chipper uh they did have some you know couplets and and triplets in there so it's pretty well rounded four day event pretty you know kind of a premier opportunity for these teenage athletes that get invited to compete there um i would say the one like the one kind of uh drawback is can't really watch it. I think they did stream the 10K row, which was like an interesting choice of an event to stream. Um, <laughs> but, you know, these are some up and coming, very talented athletes, and they're doing some really cool programming in some cool areas. Um, and it would be cool to have a way to watch it in the future. I agree. But yeah. the thing is, I, like I kind of like that they don't, though. Sorry, Pat. I kind of like that they don't oh, because yeah. I think the crown is for the teenagers. And to protect and preserve them as teenage athletes and to like help them the most. I think it's kind of great that there are these moments that we don't get to see that are just for them. And it's something that I think mm -hmm. about, I mean, we've had many conversations with Pit Teen on like how to make it the best possible event for the teenagers and making it the best possible event for the teenagers might not necessarily mean making it the best for spectators. And another conversation that we've had is, you know, how do you build the sport of CrossFit and protect teenagers and keep them mentally stable, healthy, everything like that long term? You see a lot of athletes drop off after being teenagers, or even they try to make it in the open division, and then things just kind of hit the fan. How do you really help them develop as people, as athletes, everything like that? And I think experiences like this and competitions like this are helpful and do benefit them, maybe even more than it benefits like the viewers if that makes sense i love that it is just for them yeah actually cool. last week you know uh, we had a chance to have alexis raptus and fisa gafian in the run-up to reps ahead and one of the things that alexis said because it was a, I think it was five years of time but six years of like a competitive timeline between when she qualified for the games the last time as a teenager and when she made it as an elite individual athlete and she was you know she was kind of basically saying like 
I went through a very difficult period of time, but it was in the dark. Like no, it wasn't a public ordeal. And I was, you know, was going through that and kind of to CJ's point here, it would be cool to see a similar concept for up and coming or bubble indie athletes. And another thing that the pit team throwdown is doing well is they're providing an outlet for athletes in that age range to compete. Last year, we saw the 18 to 21 yep. or age range, and they have another opportunity for that this year. Um, and again, you know, it can be, I can understand where some athletes that have had success at 16, 17 years old that get into that 18, 19, 20, 21 age range, and they, they want to be out there competing against the best in the world. That's technically their division. But it's, you know, it's um, maybe it goes back to that age old adage of CrossFit of check the ego at the door. Like, not everyone can make it every year and not everyone can make it immediately. And that doesn't mean that it's you're any lesser of an athlete by taking an opportunity like that to compete against your peers while you're still maturing and developing. And, um, and maybe I should rethink that, Bella, that it's like, OK, to have some of these competitions specifically for the younger athletes that aren't broadcast to the world for the world to see. They're just an opportunity for them to go compete against their peers. Yeah. And it's I mean, it's one of those things. It's we all want to consume the content. We know the creators that are making it. We know that they could create these really amazing stories to be told through video, through photo, things like that. But I kind of love that there are moments that we will never get to experience that are just for them, that these athletes, these kids will hold on to, into the rest of their teenage career, into an adult open career if they decide to have that. And I think that is very special and unique. And I I appreciate that they do that. I mean, I'm obviously not a parent, but I feel like as a parent, I probably would love that for them too. Wait, you're not a parent? I know. I mean, like I'm a dog mom. You're a but, dog. You know, there the same there thing. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I always say I'm not like, I'm not, I, he's not my dog child. He's not my fur child. I do have a dog, but. <laughs> yeah. I will say like, this is one of those events. Um, like John has done a really cool thing and it's, um, you know, I think at one point Trissa Smith was supposed to go and participate uh, for whatever reason she didn't, um, which was fine because it opened up an opportunity for someone. Um, and, um, but I would like to see, you know, it's, it's a great adventure. I mean, you know, for some of these teenagers to go to, to Spain, to, you know, what, what John has built there, it's like they have a mansion. Uh, you know, and, an island off of Spain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in Mallorca. It's basically the, the older brother of Ibiza, but, um, uh, or they call it Biza. Um, but, uh, uh, there was a song written about that. Uh, yeah, but Ibiza. anyway, yeah, <laughs> Ibiza. <laughs> But um, but I mean, they have, I mean, it's like a summer, it's like a, a a summer camp feel, you know. You're getting so many different athletes from Europe, America. I mean, uh, uh, Delia Moses from the U.S. was there representing the U.S. and she did really well. Um, but what an opportunity for someone like her, you know, you know, it was during her spring break she was able to go and, you know, participate in that. But it was in a villa, on on this, you know, beautiful villa, and they're given all the stuff, all the expenses are paid for. And it's a cool opportunity. I would love to see this grow. I would love to see, you know, this grow into something bigger for the teenage division. Um, and, uh, you know, bravo to John. Break opportunity. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, what what better than that? And it just seemed like if you watch it, they have a YouTube channel, too, that they have their documented from last year. And I think that's what they're trying to do is an experience, you know, for these teenagers. And, you know, John has John's been saying for a while, you know, Europe is coming. Europe is coming. Um I think this is a great opportunity for people from North America, South America to go actually go see what Europe's about, you know, yeah. um, and what better way, especially if it's all expenses paid for and um, and you get to do some fitness and make some lifelong friends. And um, and then we run into people like, you know, like Vyarni, who we don't know. You know, he's a 19 year old, works out at Reykjavik. You know, he might be the next he might meet, be the next BKG for all we know. Well, there's that. And there's also, if you think about it, the sportscape is changing a lot. You know, we don't mm. really know what CrossFit will look like next year. We don't know what it's going to look like <laughs> in five years. But True. also, we don't know what you specifically have to do to be a professional CrossFitter because it's changing a lot. So you have athletes that are only competing in their regions. You have athletes that only go to semifinals, the games. You have different types of athletes that are all very much elite in their own way in the field that are taking a different approach to the sport. And these athletes are even taking another different approach to the sport. They're getting this experience. They're getting to travel if they're not from Spain. They're getting to meet all of the competition that is going to be coming with them throughout the journey of the teenage athletes 
which is really cool because who's to say that they have to do it any way other than the way they want to do it. Maybe the crown is just the first idea of many for other events like this. I know Pitt Teen is throwing a summer camp this summer where we're doing workouts, we're doing seminars and making it more than just fitness. I mean, we're going to do a lot of that, but at the same time, we're, we're making it more than just competition. And there's so many different opportunities for it. So I think, I think it's great. I think it's fun. And if more people could put some things on like this, I think it would be incredibly special, but almost at the same point, like it's almost great that there aren't as many things that are like this to preserve that uniqueness of it. Yeah. PC uh, before. Yeah. Final thoughts. Yeah. About like, the uh, dug into this the most. Yeah. The, br the branding John did. A, he's done an excellent job with this branding of this. I think this is something, mm -hmm. like I said, just going to grow. And I think it's very unique. It's very, yeah. I just like the look. Um, and everywhere you see, it's like, you know, you just in this video, you saw the van that was transporting them had wrapping on it that said the crown with the, with that stuff. So bravo to them, bravo to Nike. You know, um, they got some good connections in Nike yeah. that, that support this. So, um, yeah. So yeah, to him, Jackie, the whole, the program crew, uh, Vic McLeod, who does a lot of the, their stuff. Great job. Bravo. Um, hopefully maybe next year we can make it out there to cover it. Um, I'm hopeful I'm trying to, so it'd be, and I'd like to see that field expand and see some of the, the top teens show up. So, but yeah, good job. Good job all around. Yeah, definitely wanted to recognize uh, what, what John has put together out there. A great opportunity. And it seems like, um, you know, the kids got the most out of that experience that, that he would want them to have. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, weeks in the, re in the Friends of the Week, Patrick will also feature some honorable mentions. Uh, this mm -hmm. week, the only honorable mention on the list is Alexis Raptus, who uh, competed at the Pro 2 Showcase for Reps Ahead. Bella, did you get a chance to watch any of that this past weekend? I didn't watch it, but I was keeping up with all the social content. And then I, they had reached out to me last week and like, oh, you should you know, help us with the next one. I was like, if Brian's involved, sure. I'll go wherever Brian is. I'll do whatever Brian's doing. Because, and also, I think when it comes to events, if there's things that you get really fixated on, that's how I have found that that's going to be something that is going to be fun in the future and it's going to continue to grow. There's so many events in CrossFit, but Brian, your brain kind of shifts and picks certain ones that you get really fixated on. And those are always the ones that end up the next year just continuing to grow. So I, I like it. He's yeah, an innovator. I mean, it was a cool, it was a really cool experience. I've been speaking to Phil for a while. I wrote, I actually yeah. I wrote a little review of the weekend. It's not a review of what happened in the matches. Um, there are some reviews out there in Morning Chalk of maybe Barbell Spin about those. But uh, mm -hmm. if, you, you know, if you're curious about what it is, I would just encourage you to watch on, on uh, our YouTube channel. Go over there. There's timestamps for each match. Pick a match that's interesting to you. And just kind of watch, and that's probably the best way to soak it in. And if you enjoy one match, check out the other ones. There were ex pretty exciting finishes on all three of them. Um, but Phil ben has been telling me, he's the director of RepSet, he's been telling me for months and months, he's like, dude, you just, you have to see this thing live. Like, you know, you can go watch Pro One event on online from last October, and you can see an epic match between Tyler Aguiman and James Sprague. But being there and in the environment, um, it's, it's, unlike anything that uh, I've ever experienced in CrossFit. And of course, when he's telling me this, I'm like, well, how many CrossFit competitions have you got? Because I've been to quite a few and there's been some pretty compelling and dramatic moments. Uh, but he and his brother, who was also there doing the scoring, they have been to the CrossFit Games. They've traveled to some competitions. So they've been been there and seen the best in the world compete. Um, but he came up with this idea. Uh, he's done, this was technically the 10th iteration of it, but only the second pro level event. Um, and one of the, you know, and then the last thing I kind of wrote about was the programming, which received some criticism um, because of just the way that it, it sort of played out for these athletes. But I don't think it was uh, necessarily that big of a miss on the program. I think it's a, a matter of just like re reframing your mindset there of, of understanding that if you go to watch a boxing match, like you don't know if it's going to end in the first round or if it's going to go the distance or if there's going to be a knockout halfway through from the guy who appears like he's getting his ass kicked for the first four rounds and then suddenly comes up with a great blow in the round number five or whatever. Um, and I think that in terms of this kind of format, uh, you don't want to become too predictable. 
so that it's not like, you know, if, if we go to the next one and all the matches go the distance again, maybe that's not the best thing. But if we go to the next one and everyone gets knocked out in the first round, maybe that's not great either. So there is definitely a, you know, a premium on programming for something that has such a spotlight on it. Um, but also he's never had athletes of this caliber before. I mean, to, like, don't forget as young as they are, Alan and Alexis were fifth and sixth at the games last year. Like these are some of the yeah. best in the world. Um, James and Fee also come in off of, you know, games performances last year. Uh, and the last thing that I really liked, I really like that they have the undercards. It gives the opportunity for lesser known athletes to get a spotlight on them and have an opportunity to compete. But it also paints a picture that I, like people, I think they know about it, but to actually see it play out is that there's, that there, you know, people say there's levels to this. And so you can see how the same workout can affect two people who are 2,000th in the open compared to 500th in the open compared to 20th in the open, for example. Um, and, and you can watch all of that over, you know, in a two-hour window on a Saturday. So, Brian, my question is, the thing that I like about it is that it is a different format. We're seeing things like, you know, fitness expos come up where we have athletes that are competing on teams that are normally as indies. You have things like this where it's matches, they're going head to head. Do you think this is more beneficial for the overall growth of the sport to get more people involved in watching it, consuming the content, seeing how this actually all works? Or do you, and like, do you think that's where we should be starting to direct and leaning towards? Or do you think the actual, you know, two day competition, six events, this is what we have to do. This is how you grow the sport. Because I think it's fun to have the balance. And I think things like this, sponsors are really happy, new faces come up. You see actually how global the sport could be depending on who can be there, who can compete. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, one of the biggest, I would say consistent feedbacks that I've gotten is that it was very easy to watch. And especially for people who don't have a lot of experience with CrossFit, um, even some of the athletes, uh, they reached, they, they were telling me after the fact, they're like, dude, people that I went to high school with that haven't, I haven't heard from in a decade, watched this thing and reached out and they're like, dude, that was really cool. Or, um, you know, that um, I spoke to someone who was like, yeah, I was, uh, I was visiting my family this weekend. It was Easter weekend and uh, I wanted to watch it. So we put it on and my whole family sat around and watched. My mom has never watched a CrossFit event before but she could immediately understand what was going on. And, you know, so many times we hear people that are trying to get someone involved in the sport that are watching the games, a rogue, a Wadapalooza, you know, these events that are available to watch and they have a hard time reeling them in for whatever reason, yeah. whether it's that uh, they don't want to watch three events at three different times during a day, or there's too many athletes on the field and they can't see them all. So they don't know what's going on or, the workout is confusing to them because they're not familiar with the language that we are familiar with from a box, whatever it is. Um, and so that was kind of, uh, it seems again, kind of like Mel uh, Melanie is saying here, like that kind of seems obvious. It's two people. There's a, a plus and a minus, so it should be very easy to follow, but to actually get that real feedback from people who were, um, you know, not people who were there, people who are just watching with other people around, uh, around them, to say, yeah, there was a pro like an approachable way to kind of enter into this world. And maybe that is kind of a, a gateway to being able to watch some of those other competitions. I don't think by any means that we should get, be getting rid of two and three day CrossFit competitions, but I think that adding something like this in that can potentially be a hook to draw some people in who have a you know an entryway that's a much more approachable um, at a beginner level. It seems like this is a pretty has some pretty good leverage in that regard. It was a blast. I had a fun time. <laughs> That's like, it was a great time. <laughs> it was, it really was. And um, I, I just, I really think, again, we, you know, in the off season or e even in season, you know, everyone just like, oh, you know, if it's not a games thing and or something related to the games, it's, it's a competition of some sort. Well, this is, this is a competition that's not like your standard competition. It's quick, simple. It's it's what we need. We need stuff like this to draw more people in, to garner more attention. Because that's the biggest complaint, like Brian said. It's like, oh, what the hell am I watching? What is this? Yeah. You know, um, this kind of simplifies. It's you know, like, you know, in this in this iteration, it was three movements, relatively easy, and the format was relatively easy to follow. Because you know, being a fight fan, being someone that enjoys UFC, like you know, I, that's what I try to. I'm, I'm visualizing this as. It's like. You know, there's a definite win. There's knockouts. There's some excitement. Um, and again, my, the most exciting thing to me 
this weekend was that second um was the, the undercars the first one where there was a clear knockout um you know our our buddy lee you know he came out hot and then he got he got knocked out you know he ended up getting knocked out by you know he lost 40 reps you know went out a little too hot but he knew he needed to do that because the guy he was going with is someone he was familiar with and knew knew that he was going to beat him in these movements and then you had someone like malachi in the second undercard who you know yeah. he's going against a guy he was going against a guy that finished second in the RX division at Wadapalooza, which is, it's, it's a very, very impressive thing, you know? Um, and he gave it all he got. I mean, you know, he, that last round, he, he put it all on the line. He almost, he almost rope a doped him. You know, if you know what that, that, that saying is like, he had him, he had him thinking that he was beat, but then that last round he came out and put the pressure on, on, on him. And, uh, those were fun. And, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, the other thing that was that was really cool about being there on site because it, again, I I imagined this would be the case, but it to act, you know, we were there, we got there on uh, Thursday night, and then Friday went to the gym, we did some setup, and while we were doing setup and testing, that you know the the athletes were in the gym training, and they did a full training day on Friday. Uh, I was able to jump in for a Metcon, <laughs> but I watched them. How'd it go? <laughs> warm up whatever and his partner workout is great i did you know it's fun and uh we finished last no problem <laughs> okay fine you know but then they like they finish up they do some accessory work some mobility work and then i mean james and down went back to to down's house they did a cardio piece in their garage that night they showed up the next day for the match they did a strength piece while the undercards were going on just to kind of prime themselves and, and you know they needed to do it anyway today they did the match i mean they were you know, it was an intense workout. People are used to doing an intense workout. And then an, an hour after when everyone left, like they continued to train. So it was um, just to be able to actually see that you can do this and it didn't interrupt their training. Mm -hmm. uh, they were able to just integrate it to a training weekend. Um, I think that that is another really important element of this is that you know, there's money on the line, which is important for athletes. There's exposure, which is important for athletes and brands. It's easy to follow. That's important for fans. And it doesn't have a massive impact on a training cycle mm -hmm. for that. It's obviously, if they have to travel to them, there's a little bit of that, that needs to be factored in. But when they're, if, you know, if there's significant money on the line, you get to be around other athletes. Have, you know, they, these guys were having fun. Like, I mean, when it was like, like we always say, when it's game time, it's game time. And you could see that, you know, they were, they were going for it. But before and after that, they were enjoying each other's company. They were having a good time training. Um, and like I said, to be able to train kind of through that one competitive workout, I think is a really important thing. It was important for me to be able to see that because then I could, you know, if there's other athletes who are like, you know, but if I do this thing, how is it going to set me back from whatever I'm doing to be able to say it didn't for these guys. So, yeah. And I mean, it's a point in the season right now, quarterfinals for individuals is, you know, Oh, that's funny. Jake, Jake, don't uh, worry. I, I'm, I will talk about this. We, we will talk about this. Don't worry. Like I said, we're going to review a lot of stuff, but I will talk about this, Jake. We got things to chat about. Uh, I don't even remember where I was going. But, oh, yeah, it's a we're at a part in the season where athletes that are going to go to semifinals, they're still training very hard. It matters. But something like reps ahead is a great opportunity for them to kind of show brands, hey, here's who I am right now be on the lookout for me if they're not already sponsored, you know, mm -hmm. exposure is always good. Exposure is really good. But, uh, yeah. So overall it was cool. It was, um, we got to get there a little bit early, got to hang out with some of the athletes, um, you know, get to know some of them, um, and, um, got to eat a lot of rolls. So, you know, Texas roadhouse bell. Yeah. The oh, Texas I'm roadhouse. Sorry, I, I was can like, where are we getting these table. rolls from? I was at I was at the table. I was at the table with uh Dallin. I mean, we we waited for like 30 minutes outside. Might might have been longer for our table because we had a huge group because you know Phil just being the great guy he is, he he brought everyone that was involved in reps ahead and he, you know took him to dinner. We went to Texas Roadhouse on a Friday night in Jacksonville. You know, what better than that? First thing we do, we sit down. James goes, Hey, what's the record for amount of baskets of rolls eaten? What is it? Uh, he said it was like 34 baskets were delivered to a table or something like or 34 rolls but anyways um i was yeah. like isn't a basket about six rolls that is so many yeah i loved it oh this yeah barkley the cinnamon butter yeah me 
we, they kept on bringing, even while we're eating our like real meal, they, they usually they stop with the rolls because that's the appetizer. No, they kept on bringing them. And then Dallin, Dallin looks at my bass. He goes, Hey, you taking those? I'm like, No. So he just loads up a, <laughs> just loads up a, a to go container rolls and uh, cinnamon butter. So, but anyways, it was great. Um, Bella, have you ever played? Uh, have you ever played the game Secret Hitler? Oh, oh really? yeah. I've played other games of the similar, you know, kind to that, but uh, uh, we played with, we played at Dallas House on the following night, and, and it was and that is a, a pretty cool thing to be able to do with some of those athletes because you see them in a totally different environment, um, and they were on the PC. Man, he couldn't get away with anything. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I, I have a better I, poker face. PC. I want two. I want two out of three. Only one person figured out I was uh, him, and that was Alexis. And she had no reason. She just looked at me. He's like, "You're Hitler." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. But uh, if anybody's <laughs> tuning in right now, it's a yeah. game. It's a game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's, it's exactly. A game. We don't want to be demonetized yeah. or canceled here. But Lee. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got to give a shot. I do have to give a shout out to Lee. Uh, I've played I've played disc golf now with uh, Sam Demeester from CrossFit Mayhem Independence. I played with Lena Richter in Norway, and now with Lee. And Lee is the first CrossFit athlete who's beaten me at disc golf. Um, so, hats off to you, man. You got the best of me for sure. Yeah. So, Dang, Lee, Brian, Lee, that's tough. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Lee was Lee was great. It was a it was an interesting course. It was a really good course, but uh, yeah. flexed me by, by playing with his shirt off for the last fifteen holes. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was flexing on do. everybody. <laughs> yeah, he was flexing on everybody. But um, <clears throat> and that yeah, but Brian lost a disc. I first time I've seen Brian lose a disc. Discs come and go, Where but that, uh, I've now lost my two first, like the first two discs I ever got. I've lost them both this year, so that was a little bit heartbreaking. But you know, it was a bad That's throw. So yeah. You should just get pink ones, and then you'll never lose them because it was pink. So bright, you know. It was pink, and it went straight into the water. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Brian. I'd go swim and get it. I'd go get it. Yeah. Brian's going to get his rematch with Lee at one of the semifinals, I guess, at some point. So, or I at the game. Go swimming in the in the waters in Florida. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Gators. Uh, fair. Gators. Yeah. Oof. But, but uh, yeah, reps yeah. ahead. Great well, job, yeah. uh, Bella. Love to. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad we were uh, be friendly was a part of it, and uh. You know, hopefully yeah. uh, there's definitely one scheduled in November. Hopefully, who knows? Maybe something will happen here soon, uh, maybe in between then. But, um, yeah, the, Bella, I think you would really enjoy it, and I think it would be great to have you there. That'd be fun. Last week, I know that they announced that uh, quarterfinals were going to have four workouts. I actually wasn't – I didn't quite understand if that was an announcement about teams or individual quarterfinals. I felt like everyone was talking about it as if it was individual quarterfinals, which is where usually people put the priority and emphasis anyway. Obviously, team quarterfinals was, is happening a few weeks ahead of time, and we were going to just talk about the concept of having four workouts a little bit today, but they've announced the team workouts, and there are four for the teams, and I think it's actually is a, a, like a nice opportunity rather than just kind of speculating about what four workouts will look like to actually see them and then potentially also think about what it could mean when it comes to the individual quarterfinals in a couple of weeks. <clears throat> and then so also semifinals too, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if we're looking at this, we're looking at programming from the open, we'll get, I mean, you know, we'll get to it once we go through all four, but there's a lot of things that I thought we were going to see that we are not seeing, at least for the teams. I also have my speculations that we will not see similar workouts for the individuals, mostly just based on what we did for the open. There's a decent amount, not necessarily of overlap, but similar movement patterns that I think if we redid them, not necessarily finding fitter, it's just, we will see the same results, but let's get into it. I can't, I, on that line, I kind of feel bad. I've been meaning to do a little bit of a study in that regard of the movements. And cause you know, in, I think that uh, a lot of people have this concept that you know each part of the season should build on itself, and and in a part of building on itself is not having too many redundancies. But I think that, mm -hmm. and, I, and again, I haven't really done as thorough of a study as I wanted to because I haven't had time to do it the way that I like to. But um, I think that uh, you know when Adrian and, and Dave are programming these things, I don't think that they're <laughs> emphasis on that as some of us are in terms of not seeing those repetitions necessarily. 
uh, and it will be yeah. I will be extremely curious to see how similar or different the individual um, quarterfinals end up being from the team quarterfinals. One thing that's you know kind of there's a massive difference actually. Uh, and Halpin, Mike Halpin is really exposing this right now because he's doing these, these in-depth open studies. One huge difference between the quarterfinals for teams and the quarterfinals for individuals is the number or the percentage rather of, a of athletes that will advance to the next, of participating athletes that will advance to the next round. In, case, in the case of teams, uh, there's less teams that have signed up in, in, well, in Africa, only 12 teams have signed up and there's 30, 30 spots available. Obviously the signups continue through the end of the first submission window, but in Asia, there's 36 teams currently registered. The last that I saw 30 teams make it. So, you know, that's a huge percentage of the participation, participating teams that are advancing to the next round. Whereas we know that in the individual quarterfinals, it's a super, super small percentage of participants that will be able to advance. I mean, it's also, a, it's a small window of, or it's a small number of teams that are signing up, but it's an even smaller pool of teams that will get to go. So I think just because there are fewer doesn't necessarily mean that they are lesser in terms of capability or fitness. I would love to see more teams trying to at least compete so that, you know, other countries, other regions get more spots, but it makes sense in its own way. Patrick, are you eating gummy bears? <laughs> no, why? What kind of gummy bears, Pat? Oh, those ones are so good. I know. Good choice. Good choice. They're healthy for you. They're the healthy ones. They're gluten free, fat free, low sodium, and they're so good. Let's, uh, PC. Let's take a let's just take a look at what was announced today in terms of the workouts, real quick. Of course. Um, yeah. Do you have them just there on the website? Yeah. So. First one's yeah. male-female pairs. They got some, uh, it's this is, uh, it's five rounds each. If you go to the scorecard in the description, you can see that there's gonna be 10 total rounds, so 20 total minutes of work, but um, lateral burpees over the bar uh, and single front squats, and then muscle-ups, muscle-ups on one ring, one set of rings, um, accumulate as many as you can in two minutes, and the next pair starts as soon as, there's no, uh, like the, the time keeps rolling. So you must finish, whoever's on the rings must finish a rep, and then the next pair starts. Um, pretty, you know, I'm in this case, I'm looking at this as a, basically an MWG style workout, you know, for the athletes of this caliber burpees are pretty much a monostructural movement. I know they're technically classified as a gymnastics, but you have the buy-in with the burpee and the front squat. Um, and then you go to the muscle ups. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, I would be, I would be, it would be fun to watch this one because, you know, what, what I immediately think about is who's going to do those first muscle ups, you know, because you got to do the burpees, you got to yeah. do the front squats. You can't really dilly dally there. Like you got to push the pace. You have to do the, fr the front squats unbroken. Uh, in general, you would probably like to get your male athlete up on the, on the rings first, because they'll probably do a bigger set. But if the female athlete is handling the flat bar more easily and she feels more fresh and she can buy a little time, then the male athlete can maybe knock out a bigger number after resting. So I think you'll see a lot of, uh, give and take there with different, not just teams doing it differently in terms of who hits the rings first, but uh, even pair to pair, you might see, you know, one male athlete who takes the, the brunt of the muscle ups where a female athlete on the other pair might be proficient at those. I like this workout overall um, as a semifinal, work, as a quarterfinal workout. No, I do too. And I think it's fun. I mean, 125, 185 is a very light barbell for these teams. So to see that and, you know, that's just the buy-in. This is this is just a muscle up workout. So what is your capacity there? I think it's really fun. And I think there's only, honestly, there's only so many muscle ups you can do in this window. So you're going to have to very, you're very much going to have to push the pace on everything else to get there and then get at least one rep more than the other teams. Cause again, the cycle time of a muscle up, there's, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, the the, uh, the weight of the front squat and then the fact that you're doing them in sync, the fact that you're kind of pressed for time and it's a small window, you know, I would just encourage teams, make sure that you're hitting that extension on the front squat because it would be, you know, I don't know what the penalties would look like in a situation like that, but, um, you know, it's not a, it's not going to be a capacity thing. It would just be kind of like a skirting the edges, sort of a, a no rep, so to speak. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall, I think pretty pretty fun one to start, two minutes you know, you're going to do it five times. So, and, you know, on the rings, it's work to rest. So I think that what I really saw at reps ahead last week is two minutes on one minute off. Check this out, Bella. 
Alexis Raptus over seven rounds. These were her reps per round. 94, 94, 94, 94, 94, 95, 98. There you go. How many total reps was that? 663, I think. It's a lot of math. I hope he's got all the numbers. But uh, <clears throat> we'll put them out. Waiting for those numbers, Barkley. Waiting for those numbers. You have them, Patrick. I shared them. You did? Okay. I mean, you share a lot of things. <laughs> lovers. With lovers. Stop fighting. Share a lot of things with me. I don't know. It's the point is that two minutes of work, two minutes of rest, after mm -hmm. to the skeleton, a one to one work to rest capacity, you're going to see a very similar output round to round. And so, with, you know, yep. whatever you see in round one, um, as long as they're, uh, as long as they're not getting any no reps, you're probably going to see a pretty similar output as the as the rounds go on. I could see some, you know, uh, athletes potentially deteriorating in terms of the muscle ups if they. You know, if you do a set of 15 in round one, you may not be able to do that in round five, but maybe your partner can kind of bail you out and you'll have, you know, still a pretty similar out output. Um, but this will be, this will be fast. Every interval, interval should be intense. And I think these athletes, the recoverability in two minutes is not that big of a deal. To be honest, the only thing that I am concerned about with this first workout is the number of athletes that will be skirting the line in terms of full range of motion for movements. I think burpees, everyone's going to do it. You know what you have to do. But when it comes to a barbell front squat and muscle ups, you always see athletes not coming to full extension of the hips. You see athletes not completely pre locking out on the rings before they push back. And not saying that athletes are doing this necessarily on purpose. Um, some of them might be. You toe the line until you get no repped. But I, that is what makes me nervous about this one, is that you, I think we will see a lot of people that are walking that line and they're going to do what it takes to get to semifinals. And I'm really hopeful that, you know, the judging team is very much on top of this one. Because, yeah, you know, agree. you don't like seeing that. You know, like, I no. felt bad with Rebecca from the Open. I mean, everyone was talking about her range of motion. Everybody. Everybody had an opinion. Even we had an opinion. And when it comes to that, that scrutiny, it's not fun to deal with. So I'm hopeful that, you know, we're going to see it. But I'm hopeful that the judges do what they need to do. PC, yep. let's, see, let's see second one. Okay, second one, second one. Brian's like, I've already moved on. We're done with one. We're going yeah, to toe. Exactly. That was so that was so two minutes ago. Yeah, way to rush me, Brian. <laughs> you brought up a topic of an only revisit. <laughs> is that pool? Is that pool boy? Is that it pool is, boy? Mike. Yeah. Look at pool boy. He's famous. He's all over the place now. Yeah, that was really, really cool to see him on there. Yeah. We got a couplet here, uh, weightlifting and gymnastics, nothing too crazy. They upped the, the weight of the dumbbell from, uh, to 70 and 50 pounds, which I think is um, not just a, uh, you know appropriate, but almost needed for this stage and these athletes, um, just in terms of the, even the speed at which they're moving. But alternating dumbbell snatches, all four synchronized. I like, I love it when they're able to, you know, get some element of the four person synchronization into the online part of the season uh, you know, 50, 30, 20 is the rep scheme. So 50 straight reps of that to start. So, you know, right away here, we're seeing a communication element. Uh, you know, if, if someone falls off the pace, how do you respond to that? And it's like, and you look at this on paper, there's nothing that's really too difficult for these people to do. So it's a matter of efficiency. Um, and then when you switch to the toes to bar, kind of an interesting nuance here. It's not all four at the same time. It's the way that I read it is any two people can do those toes to bar. So, you know, if I'm amazing at toes to bar, I can do 25 with Bella and then hop off and do another 25 with PC. Um, and so you, you, someone who may not be as good at toes to bar can potentially get a, a little bit of a rest here, which I don't always love. Um, it's only 100 total reps and that, you know, two people do them at a time. So you're kind of only doing, you know, it could potentially only be doing 50 reps on a toes to bar for elite athletes. That seems like not that many. Um, and the 20 minute time cap seems, it seems Longer. excessive to me. It seems like everyone's going to be finishing this with a, potentially half the time to spare in some cases. I think the way that the athletes that will make semifinals and then inevitably make the games, a 50 and 70 dumbbell to them is what a 35 and 50 is to a regular athlete. So I think that dumbbell will be flying. I think the only thing that will prevent, you know, any people from not moving forward is actually synchronization of that dumbbell. But I agree with you on the reps almost not being enough for the total bar. 
Because if I don't want to do toe to bar, say I'm injured and I don't have to do toe to bar, do I have to do any? Not necessarily. Or maybe I didn't look at the scorecard, but maybe not. I didn't see anything. Um, I didn't get to look look through it super thoroughly. This only announced a few, maybe two hours ago or something, maybe less. But uh, yeah, it's a you know that was an interesting, so just something that jumped out. Um, <laughs> they missed to add forty to the sequence. Great question. I don't think so, but uh, score, you know, look at the hundred you know, on the scorecard. They have they have it the same way on the scorecard. So 50, 30, 20. Yeah. yeah, I think the, the the weird thing to me here is just the time cap, um, and then. You know, the fact that, you know, maybe nobody, you know, you can get away with not doing any toes to bar uh, seems like a kind of a strange one to me. But um, again, all of these are meant to be taken in as one collective group. So this is the second of four workouts that were announced. Um, PC, any thoughts on this one? You're muted. I think you're muted yourself. I am. I am muted. Uh, I just don't want you guys to hear me dig into the bag of gummy bears. Um I, I, the first workout and this workout, I think this really, really lines up really well for um, the the Peak 360, the cry, the cry team. I think that, you know, um, especially the males, I think Tola and and um, Noah are going to do really well, especially on that first workout. And then I can definitely see them doing just as well, if not better, in this workout as well. So, um, yeah. So that's that's kind of where I'm looking at. When I see these workouts, I think about the teams I know and what teams I think are going to thrive in these type of workouts. And right now, these first two workouts, I really see that um, that that Krieger team doing really well in these two workouts. So what do you think about this? Is this in the toes of our standards? I was just kind of reading through. If one athlete reaches the bar ahead of the other, they may wait at the top with their feet in contact with the bar. <laughs> <laughs> just in a forward fold. Could you imagine? That would be awesome. Just I would like love hanging it. out. Yep. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen that included in the standards before, and I'm. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, I don't maybe. Think it, but <clears throat> it sounds like this is grab the full standard or muscle up standard. Is like, yeah, we just you could do that for toe to bar. That's but hilarious. Because why not? I mean, I wouldn't do it. Probably not the most efficient in terms of keeping your cord from blowing up but why not what if what if you're really good why not well i mean depends if you're wearing booty shorts that night or that day or not i guess too i don't know yeah okay let's check out the third workout <laughs> sorry brian third workout is maybe the most complicated one to understand of the three um it's uh male male and female female pairs um so I think that the men the men have to go through a 500 meter row, 50 handstand pushups, 50 synchro wall balls. The handstand pushups are one station, so only one person working at a time. Then the women do it, and then the men come again. This time they go the other way: synchro wall balls, handstand pushups, 500 meter row, and the females finish. So it's technically four rounds, but again, this is like a one to one work to rest basically, um, and with the minimal number of reps that are here and the amount of rest that's that's created when you know, the women are, or the men are working and you're not working. I mean, this feels like for these athletes, like this feels like a full sprint, like, you know, 500 meter row, you're probably going to make one switch 50 handstand pushups. There's no designation on stricter kipping. There are athletes in this division that can knock out. I mean, how the guy that does the technical producing for be friendly fitness uh, broadcasts, he can do 40 plus strict handstand pushups in 30 seconds. And he's not a semifinal athlete. You're going to see guys, you, you know, you bring up the Krieger, you see Noah Olsen kick up down. He can might do mm -hmm. 50 handstand pushups in less than a minute and let's go. Now the risk would yep. be that you have to do the wall balls. So they'll probably split up the work a little bit. But like I'm looking at this and again, I see that 25 minute time cap and I'm like, who is this time cap for? For me, like, I don't think any, like the top teams are coming anywhere near this. But it's not about the top teams. The top teams are going to make it. It's the teams that are in that, you know, bottom percentage. The teams that are going to make it are always going to make it, but the teams that are, you know, friend on the fringe, maybe this is their opportunity to maybe make it to a semifinal or they just want it to something that's a little bit more friendly, you know, because it is just quarterfinals. I thought semifinals, if this was our semifinals workout, I'd be, I'd be more shocked. Yeah. Yeah. For but sure. It's just quarterfinals. Maybe it's that, they do, that that's what they want is they want people to finish yeah. the work. And so they're given. Yeah. Why not? You need to do that. 
Um, but I think, uh, you know, it'll be, if, if you're, if you get a chance to watch any of these or you know some teams that are doing them, the one thing that might be interesting with that 500 meter row at the end in the second round, that's where you can have your specialists potentially show out, you know, think about yeah. since Patrick brought them up, if in the second round, after the 50 sinker wall balls are done, Noah shoots, pushes, hit, you know, kicks up and does 50 strict handstand pushups. If he still has some capacity for that. And Tola is just waiting there to rip on the rower for 500 meters. That's where you can see that kind of a sprint at the at the end of it. Um, so I'm sure we'll see some some athletes, you know, some teams that specifically have. I mean, when you talk about handstand pushups and rowing, there are people that are exceptional at both. But those are also two things where you know usually the better you are at one, the more difficult the other is. Generally speaking, it's it's advantageous to be tall on the rower and not so advantageous to be tall on handstand pushups. So I think especially in the back half, you'll see. Uh, teams that maybe do have, I mean, some of these teams have guys that are almost the same build or girls that are almost the same build, but that's where you could see some yeah. discrepancy there. The monitor must count up to 500 meters. Mm -hmm. Oh, they both have to do the row. Yeah. So the requirement's two rowers. Oh, so something both, to note. Yes. Both have to row. Like both have to do the handstand, the, the wall balls, one on the handstand push Okay. So forget what that mm -hmm. what I just said about that. That's yeah. right. Yeah, both uh, athletes must be rain seated until both monitors clear read 500 meters. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, something to note that there has there, um, and they, it states it here, um, there is no required floor plan for any of these workouts from what I've seen. So, no required floor plan, but they do at times designate that you must have one piece of equipment a certain amount of distance from another. I believe like right. on the ring clubs, the barbells have to be at least five feet from the rings. They cite that as a safety precaution, mm -hmm. but there's some freedom with regards to that. Um, either way, again, I'm looking at this workout and I see, so now it's a thousand meters that each athlete has to row. So we know it's going to take three to four minutes. A uh, hundred total synchro wall balls is going to take three to four minutes. And then a um, hundred handstand pushups split between two people, you know, it's, that's like, I guess like maybe two to three minutes for, for most of these athletes. So uh, it seems a little bit out of proportion compared to the other ones. Uh, maybe there's some yeah. intent that I'm not missing, that I'm not seeing there right off the bat, but just that's kind of a first reaction. Hey, this is a, this is a new a new guy. Hello, FitBoy Crypto. Hello, FitBoy. Nice. Thanks for joining us. They were yeah, out. So the is not going to be expected. You're all expecting. Workouts mm -hmm. will be manageable for all 25 percenters. We're seeing yeah. that. Yeah, it's we're like seeing we're, that that's already. what we were saying. Yeah. 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 And I think um, you know, it's uh it's you know, these are out here. It's fun to fun to kind of talk of them, look at them and see where they're at. They can offer some clues for future. Um, it's fun to kind of see how they fit in with the season when it's all said and done. But uh, you know, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. If you have not been listening to what Dave's been talking about, he said, you know, this is a it's a it's an extension of the open uh you know it serves a little bit of a different purpose but it's not meant to be a semifinal where you know everything is going to be maybe as beautiful all yes, must I, be the same that'll be interesting to judge hell i came to hit i came to, i came to synchronize it with myself but i'm doing it by myself so you're like my brain and my body are saying two exactly Hey, that's why I wear a face mask when I do wall balls because yeah, yeah. it's a little accident prone. This might be this might may, this may be one of those workouts that has a very different feel when you do it than when you look at on on paper. Mm -hmm. It is a very yeah. approachable workout. So uh, this, I mean, I could easily see this being programmed in an affiliate. Uh, maybe some affiliates will choose to program this for a partner workout this weekend or something like that. I think that'd be really cool to do. Actually, maybe I'm gonna do. Actually, I might do this with a partner this weekend. Not it. I love that. All right, let's take a look at the last one real quick. This one is uh, straight up weightlifting, and we do have weightlifting, a weightlifting element in all four of these workouts. We have the front squats, the, the dumbbell snatch, the wall ball, and here we have two weightlifting components. Now, this is an AMRAP. Uh, kind of nice to kind of mix it up. We've got the women and the men working to, uh, separately. So the women have to accumulate 30 deadlifts, then the men 30. The women have 30 shoulder overhead. The men have 30 shoulder overhead. One athlete working at a time, I believe. And the weights are different for the deadlifts of shoulder overhead, as they should. So four barbells on the floor. Um, 
you know, if you're doing these workouts, check all the standards, read everything there to make sure that safety and everything is, is accounted for. Uh, but <clears throat> you know, these weights to me seem heavy to these guys. It's fairly routine, 315 pound deadlifts, 185 shoulder overhead for the men, 205, 125 for the women. Um, you know, it's going to be fast, especially because you can split it up. I think that on the deadlifts, you'll probably see smaller sets if, if possible. Uh, I mean, smaller sets, because if, if you break it, you just drop it and move and the guy can come right in. Whereas if you want to do the shoulder overhead, you have to clean it and get it up there. So doing bigger sets at that weight would probably pay off. Um, yeah. And you have, the, but you have once again, this work to rest ratio, the women do 30, they get a rest while the men do 30 the women do 30. They get a rest while the men do 30 and vice versa. Um, and I'm not sure right off the bat how I feel about having three of the four workouts where there's like a one-to-one -one work to rest for them. Maybe there's a reason for it. If we could just ask next week for, we can just ask Dave and Bob's like, Hey, this is the trend. Why? It's one of those things. I think when it comes to these programmed workouts, there are reasons that I will never understand that maybe will never be vocalized. But yeah, yeah. <clears throat> very true. From the man who digs into all the data, helping saying the time caps make very it more true. tie breakers, as opposed to having a bunch of cap plus the same number. Um, yeah, this is an AMRAP, so everyone's working for 15 minutes. The first workout is going to be 20 minutes fixed time as well, two minutes on, two minutes off. And then we have time caps for two and three that I think are um, long enough for majority of the teams to finish. Um, but, you know, when you look on paper and you see 15, 20, 20, 25, even though it's only four workouts, it's a decent amount of time that you're actually on the floor over the course of these four workouts. Um, Bill, I, you know, right when we saw them earlier today, you had said there's no heavy barbell. Uh, but when you do see weightlifting across all four workouts, you see some, you know, moderate heavy loads here, uh, especially as the reps start to increase. Um, do you think that this is still an adequate test of strength? when progressing to the next round, despite not having a necessarily heavy bar? Yeah, I think these workouts for this week are very friendly to top 25% teams. I think we'll see the very heavy bars, hopefully at semifinals and at the games. And I don't think necessarily a very strong athlete is the fittest athlete, if that makes sense. I know, you know, I've heard a lot of athletes were hoping for a heavy barbell so they could show out, but that's not necessarily the point of quarterfinals. The point of quarterfinals is to show that you have the capacity to move moderate to heavy loads. I mean, 125 shoulder overhead, it's not nothing. It's routine for the athletes and teams that are going to make the games, for sure. It should be a no-brainer. None of this should be a problem for any of them. And that's kind of the point. It's just to get them there. Yeah, and it's uh, it's I think that it's a, a recurring theme that uh, you know the games team has been kind of pushing out there, whether you or us or we want to receive it or not is up to us really. But uh, even though a lot of the athletes at the top of this sport are also very strong, you have to have the capacity. And if you look at the open leaderboard, especially on the men's side, and just scroll through the first page, you're going to see a ton of names that you know. We know that there are certain athletes out there that for whatever reason aren't putting in 100% efforts on the open workouts, and they might hit be a little bit lower down the leaderboard for whatever reason. But the athletes that are healthy and feeling good and whatever, you put them a dumbbell and some burpees, they're right up at the top. You give them some rolling deadlifts and jump ropes, they're right up at the top. You give them some thrusters and pull-ups, spark muscle-ups, they're up at the top. And it's going to be the same thing here at the team quarterfinals as the workouts that we see. Even though they are approachable weights, approachable workouts, I'm thinking of doing one this weekend, even though I'm not competing in a team. I didn't qualify for quarterfinals, but I could do that workout. Um, and, and maybe that's the point, is that the workouts that you can do, these guys can do them. They're just doing that much better. They're going to do better. That's, exa that's exactly the point, Brian. You can do them at your gym. Congratulations. But they will do them better. And they will do them at a higher intensity, and they will do them faster than you could have ever imagined. But that's not even a bad thing. It's the reality of a lot of people i don't think they quite understand like not everyone is supposed to make the games not everyone is supposed to make semifinals the fittest of the fit should go to the games it is a if we want it to be it'll be a professional sport we have to understand that just because we can doesn't mean we're at the same level it's like 
there's a lot of people out there that can probably throw a phenomenal football or can kick a field goal under pressure. That's awesome. That does not mean that they belong in the NFL. Correct. Absolutely. A hot take. A hot take. I support it. And I love that people are very competitive and I love that. And there's a competitive environment and opportunity for every level of athlete. But when it comes to the games and when it comes to getting to the games, the fittest, I love you. I love you. It's not, it's not mad at you. I like you. You're very nice. And I like that you're here. I appreciate <laughs> you're here. But it's the reality of the sport. When you I mean, looking at the workouts, you see the row, 1,000 meters for everyone. I'm counting the burpees over the bar for these athletes as a monostructural. Um, but it's a, you know, it does classify as a gymnastics. I don't think that anyone's – oh, yeah, this is a, what I just put together earlier today when I first saw these. Uh, I'm guessing that not anyone is very upset at the omission of shuttle runs from the team quarterfinals workout. But do you feel like maybe they're lacking a little bit on the monostructural compared to weightlifting and gymnastics here? I think I would have liked to ski versus a row because I think we saw a row in the open. And, you know, while this is for teams specifically, I think it would have been a little bit more fun to see a ski. But again, I don't think anyone that will make it to the semifinal level or the games level will really have any complaints on a row. They're all very proficient. But I think it would have been nice to see a ski or a different sort of monostructural movement. Do you think that, I mean, I, I agree. Um, but do you think like a ski, that's something that every gym has, because there are gyms out there that don't have ski ergs. I feel like a ski erg is that secondary cardio machine that most gyms are adopting though, or an echo bike, something different. I think what? most gyms Definitely that I go bike. into, it's yeah, like I think most echo gyms bikes. I, yeah. like our gym, we have most a pretty big gym and we have, I mean, I think we have like 20 echo bikes. We have 20 rowers, but we only have two ski ergs, you know? Hmm. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. You don't see the ski until you get to semifinals uh, because it's such a – it's an expensive – a ski erg is just as much, if very not expensive. more. You're very expensive. I don't, and yeah. I don't remember the first uh, – I, I was – when I started doing the Open was 2014. Rowing was in one of the workouts that year. So I don't know what the protocol was for announcing that uh, rowing was going to be a needed thing to have for – open workouts or if it was just uh if they didn't even bother with that i did i think it was probably three or four years ago now that i just threw out this suggestion of uh announcing two years ahead of time that you're gonna you're gonna need an echo but let's say it's 2020 right in 2022 yeah. open you're gonna need an echo bite you got two years to figure it out because remember there was that year where they needed dumbbells dumbbells yep it's panicking in the last six weeks and then people were selling out of dumbbells out of and no one could get the dumbbells I needed. So, but a two year runway, like that would, you know, whether it's a ski or a concept two bike, an echo bike, whatever you want to use, people could figure it out in that amount of time, mm -hmm. um, but they haven't done that yet. I do think that Dave mentioned on a week in review sometime in the last month that, that he'd been, you know, flirt the idea of having an echo bike in, in an open or that idea has crossed his mind or someone asked him about it, um, but he didn't know if all gyms would have it. Well, it's like, well, maybe that's the answer. Say, hey. Tell him. Next year, you need an echo bike or two yeah. years from now, you need an echo bike because it does open up a little bit the playbook, especially when you have two different stages of online qualifier. Um, you know, we had the rower, we have the rower, we had the jump rope and the burpee, we have the burpee again. I mean, if, for the pros, some people do consider the wall ball to be a monostructural as well. It's so, so it's rhythmic and, and repetitive for them. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but here, I'm just kind of, again, when I, anytime I see a set of programming, I'll do something like this, just kind of first thoughts, get it on paper. I think the weightlifting, I mean, it's it's prevalent in every all of them. And you see nothing super heavy, but you push up into that moderate uh, load a few times. You see some squatting, pulling, pressing, um, a couple of them more than once with a light and a moderate load. So perfectly fine there. Gymnastics, I think, you know, the muscle ups, as Bella said, super critical. Handstand push ups will be interesting to see how they play in. Toes to bar is, are definitely important in that workout, especially with the synchronization of them. So, um, I don't know. It was just something that jumped out the page at me, but I think that it actually lends to a bigger picture is there's not that much opportunity on the online programming to, to work in the monostructural in the way that we might see at a, a live competition. Yeah. I mean, For it'd now. be nice if all gyms could have every piece of equipment, but we are most, I mean, every gym has rowers now, so we'll take what we can get. That means yeah. you just got to get better at the rower. If you know it's coming, you better be rowing all the time. Bella, you haven't seen this yet. 
Patrick, you're on mute if you're trying to talk to us. You might be talking to your dogs. So. Nope. Okay. I hear you. Um, but flip over to the Indie tab. I just did this for fun. I looked at the uh, workouts and I said, what if these were just uh, team versions of the individual workouts? What would those potentially look like? So Bella's seeing this for the first time right now. But this is what I thought. Instead of having the um, wrap of muscle ups, you could just have five rounds for time, 10 burpees over bar, 10 front squats, same weights, 185, 125, 10 ring muscle ups. Um, especially when you keep in mind what Dave said is that everyone will be able to at least start these workouts. That workout kind of makes sense that it, it gets increasingly difficult as you go through the movements, <laughs> obviously the rounds. Um, in the middle part, I didn't think you needed to really change the volume at all. 50, 30, 20, dumbbell snatch and toes to bar. It's a lot of hinging um, and co you know compressing of the core, but quarterfinals athletes, I feel like this, you know, you're trying to find the best. Second, the third workout, basically, instead of having an up and back, which you could still do, just two rounds for time, hop on the row, hit some handstand push-ups, 50 wall balls, maybe make the second set strict to just increase the difficulty a little bit. Again, everyone can play in round one. You got to have the extra capacity in round two. And the last workout, same weight, same movements, instead of 15 minutes, because it's your, your uh, work and rest with the male and females, eight minutes, 15 dead, 15 shoulder overhead. That would be nasty, though. <laughs> if these are the indie workouts, the number of people that signed up or that were considering signing up are going to be probably going to decrease a little bit. I think when it comes to teams, I think people are a little bit yeah, more they expect that. not necessarily realistic. Yeah, but they sure. expect it. If you're going team, you are going with the expectation of we are fit enough to go to make a semifinal. I don't think most people, you know, train team all year round and have that idea. But if these are the quarterfinal workouts for the individuals, holy smokes, people are in for it. Well, just to kind good. of, I like you, know, it. you know, like you said yeah. earlier, the individual quarterfinal workouts could be nothing like the team workouts. Mm -hmm. There is also yeah. potential that they're, uh, ha they have a very similar movements. It does seem like, uh, you know, one of the things we were talking about, I think last week is that, uh, you know, Dave and Adrian want these workouts to be accessible. The workouts yeah. we have on the team side, they're very accessible. You know, you need a barbell and some high rings. You need a dumbbell and a pull-up bar. You need a rower, a wall. And the target for the wall balls you need two barbells like it's not a ton of equipment required and if they're having the same thought with uh individual quarterfinals and i you know these things kind of make sense um you see, i didn't get either of those comments that you pulled up is too fast you pretty much answered was... fit, fit boys i do think this foreshadowing style workouts we see individual program quarters and yeah <laughs> This is an interesting topic, the volume of athletes. Some gyms will need to cycle through in six days for Indian age groups would likely limit equipment. There absolutely are gyms out there that have 100-plus athletes that have qualified. Yeah. Um, I think that that was some of the intent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another dumbbell center burpee after an Indian Open. We did 90. Well, That's fair. You know, sure, the man. teams have to deal with it, so we'll see. But, um, yeah, this concept, I think Adrian spoke about it with Chase Ingram on the CrossFit podcast, is that they've heard from the affiliates that that can be a stress, uh, and, and therefore they've expanded the, the windows. So you have four workouts and six days. Um, you know, it's kind of – it seems to me like it's one of those things, like no matter what they do, there's going to be someone who's unhappy with it. If they give extra days and they're like, man, yeah. now I have to make a modifications or accommodations for my quarterfinals athlete for six days instead of four. But if you make it four, then they're going to say, oh, I'm running. I don't have enough time to get everyone through. So it's like – but what I hear mo more importantly is that they're listening and they're trying to make a plan that can be accommodating for, um, you know, whoever's doing this. And I think that – uh, if you do have a lot of athletes making it, even though it is six days instead of four days, that uh, hopefully that gives you a less stress for each day that you need to be, you know, implementing those things. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's a, you know, there's four four people doing workouts, and you know they're going to take up some space. You have to have the cameras that takes up more space, and that's just part of it. Um, and and ultimately, I think it just comes down to the, you know, whether it's the head coach or the owner of your gym, whatever. Um, being a good communicator, getting kind of ahead of the game with uh, knowing that this is coming, knowing that there's going to be teams or athletes that are doing this, um, and hopefully motivating your communities to be supportive and rallying around those instead of, um, you know, upset the way of whatever you want to be doing. Yeah. I think these workouts, what we see your team, it's going to really, it really, it, 
Noah's team is going to be really hard to beat in these workouts. You know, Noah's, they, Noah's team is going to be hard to beat any workout. That's yeah. the thing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I looked at the year Invictus, of the teams. I look at the Invictus teams, and you know, there are some. I mean, you know, but I think the Invictus team will probably be more. They'll 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 be more impressive in semifinals. Um, um, and then just knowing just. And then some of the European teams, but I think that Noah's team, these workouts for quarterfinals really line up really well for their strengths. And yeah. um, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. But like I said, last year, who was, it, it was proven that kind of pretty much swept all the workouts when it came to the quarterfinals. And, you know, we saw the end result of that. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah I, mean, I guess we'll kind of put a bow on the quarterfinals. Uh, anything, anything you guys want to add to that? Uh, just like kind of last thing is, you know, if uh, I've, I've mentioned this offhand, but if you look at the uh, leaderboard for teams after the open, it can be very misleading because there's, you know, the opportunity to register so many different people from a gym. After this weekend, we'll have a really a much better idea of who actually the competitive teams are from around the world. I mean, we know some of them for sure because they've been uh, announcing those. Um, but even this week, there's been a couple of teams that have um, kind of made some announcements about what their rosters actually look like. Uh, I know Patrick's, you know, saying that that team from uh, with Noah is is going to be very difficult to beat. But there's a lot of competitive teams, and there's a long way to go in the season. Um, and as he mentioned, you know, Proven looked pretty unbeatable early last year, and it didn't turn out that way. Uh, so I I like that the you know team quarterfinals. I actually, you know, I'm nervous about the time between individual quarterfinals and semifinals for a couple of reasons. It seems pretty tight to me, but I like that there's a little bit of you know on the other hand get the teams here we'll get to see who they are we have a chance to kind of maybe evaluate a little bit more in depth what those what the distribution of competitive teams looks like for a week yeah. or so before we get to the indie quarters so if you're interested in the team competition in general after this week we'll have a much better picture of maybe where the best teams actually are dispersed across the world yeah and if you are a team and you are doing quarterfinals remember um it ends monday to april 8th Registration for teams closes Saturday, April 6th at 5 p.m. And also, if you want a quarterfinal shirt, you can purchase those if you want them. Uh, just go to the game's website. But uh, again, I'm like, I'm employed now by CrossFit. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you're still thinking about it, register your team closes at Saturday, April 6th, 5 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, let's move on. I'm going to pull this up and I'm actually really upset that um, we're not following Chad. So my bad, Chad. I was just That's going to say, old, wait, you don't follow Chad? Embarrassing. Well, this is the be friendly profile. So That's my, so my bad, embarrassing. Chad. For those who don't know, go follow Chad. You, say you yeah. were upset that he doesn't have a beard in his profile picture. That too. Everybody I, should I'm go very, follow him. Yeah. But besides that, I love Chad. I mean, if you... Brian, you've known Chad longer than I have, um, or me and Bella, but, um, you know, I'm a big fan. He's a, yeah, UFC fan, former Air Force, mm -hmm. you know, love Star Wars, Mizzou, Colorado. I mean, I, I love all those things, too. I'm, you know, I don't like Legos. I do like watching Lego, the Lego show, though. Yeah, Lego. You don't like Legos? Movies. Lego Masters. Well, I hate stepping on You don't on like them. Legos? Yeah. Yeah, but, like, building them is so fun. I never got into it. I was more G.I. Joe and stuff like that. But Chad, I'm, gonna send you some, I'm sending you some Legos. Oh, just, oh gosh. Just like, with right. many, you know, just like with many other professions, I guess we'll call them, or uh, in the sport of CrossFit, there's more and more people that are putting out statistics. Um, and there's some really good statistics out there that other people are, are providing. Um, but Chad Schroeder has been the storehouse for CrossFit Games season data for over a decade, I think 12 or 13 years total now. And whether it's an article that he writes for the Games uh, website or something he puts on his own Instagram, when he puts out st you know, stats like this, they are usually, com you know, if, if that's something that's interesting to you, they're usually compelling and comprehensive. And I would say worth taking a look at, you know, he doesn't, he's much more selective with when he does it compared to a lot of other people who are doing it. Uh, and therefore, usually the quality of what he's putting out there is really high. Um, these, uh, besides just giving him a shout out, these accolades are super impressive what he's pulled out of this data. Uh, Turi Helgadotter, who, you know, she didn't miss the games by very much last year, and she's got an incredibly long and storied resume, is the best open athlete that has competed in all 14 Opens with an average place worldwide of 61.07. I mean, 
you're not going to find a set like that anywhere else. And that's like, you know, um, before Katrin was qualifying for the games, Turi was in the sport of CrossFit. You know, Annie was already there, and then it was Turi, and then we have all these others that have come since. But I really liked that that kind of gives some credit to her. You know, it's sometimes for what she's accomplished in the sport, you know, it's a little unfortunate for her that there's, you know, three other women that have stolen so much of the limelight coming out of Iceland. She's been around for a long time, and I love that he led with that step. You know, Nikoski, oldest man to have won the Open at age 29. Amazingly, when Velner won it, he was 29, and Fraser's last year winning it, he was also 29. Nikoski was the oldest 29-year-old, and then 24.3 uh, was his uh, gives him four total wins in the Open over his career, which moves him into a six, tie for sixth all time amongst men and women. Um, and again, this is an athlete who's been doing this for a long time. Great to see him getting some recognition, but cool to see Chad put that in perspective there. Uh, Koski, another... Koski joins the 10 club this year if he makes the games, right? Or is he? Yeah, he's made nine of the last 10. The only one he missed was 2018. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and he likes to joke okay, that was the perfect one to miss because he got to skip the marathon row. Even though <laughs> he, loves, he loves long sustained monostructural elements in general. I mean, he cross country skis for fun. Yeah. Um, you know, marathon row. I don't know if that's something that uh, everyone's looking to sign up for. Does, is anybody looking to sign up for a marathon row? Oh, uh, there are some. There are some people out there. We won't qualify what kind of people, but they're out there. I will say I did that marathon row only because Boz. Um, that year they did it. There was kind of like a, like a challenge to judges. I think Boz went and did it, and then kind of like posted it, and then all the judges started doing it, and I was like, "Well, this is dumb." And then I ended up doing it. I did go through. Uh, I did watch two Lord of the Rings during that row, that marathon row. So which I ones? Which one? I, I I started with one and and then I did the second one. So I yeah. watched Fellowship this week, so I feel bad. Oh, okay, all right, we're, we're all right. Extended so, cuts only. Extended yeah, cuts only. Extended cuts only. So yeah, you can. I've, I've reserved those for trips over the Atlantic. <laughs> Just the Atlantic. I wish I could stay awake long enough to watch them on the. Well, that's on the thing the is like they're kind of these like I've watched them so many times they are entertaining and and I can watch them straight through. But also if I fall asleep and wake up and they're still on, I'm not upset about it. I'm okay. Like, but you also know probably exactly what's happening when you wake up. You're like, oh, cool! I can just pick up where I left off. We're good. It's fine. BKG twelve consecutive top 100 finishes in the Open. Only the second man to do so. The other is Rich Froning. Rich is no longer competing in the Open, so BKG has the potential to become the first to 13 next year if he wants to. But Sybil Trelawney would always cost you to be the first one to get up from the table if 13 people are having dinner together. <laughs> oh, Potter Deep for you guys. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Saunders and Noah Olson now have top uh, 11 top 100 finishes in the Open, including, this is crazy, four top fives. Five top tens for Kara, three top fives, and five top sixes for Noah, including one worldwide win. Two of the best who ever do, done it and highlighted there with a couple of key stats from Chad. Emma McQuaid, I, I love that Emma shows up on this list. I mean, last year uh, she was not competing healthy for majority of the season. I think a lot of people are kind of writing her off. Barbell Spin just get, sent out their media poll for April uh, top 25s. I think I still have her in my top 25 for this season. Wouldn't be sleeping on her. And sure enough, 10 consecutive top 100 finishes, which, by the way, are all top 36 finishes. Nine of the 10 are in the top 20. Has to be one of the best open athletes of all time, even though she doesn't have any wins. That's a really incredible streak. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, even, I mean, this is amazing too. You know, she gets, she gets written off so often and she hasn't made the games in a number of years now, but nine top 100 finishes in the open. All of them are in the top 70 time. She's won the open three times. Most of any woman, Fraser's won it three times. Froning's won it four. That's it. She's tied for second all time male or female. And you know, I think that she's going to be in the mix. I believe PC, do you say that John Young picked her to make the games this year already? He did. Yep. He did. So, you know, others out Old there are strategy. <laughs> See if it works out. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Jeff Adler reigning for this man on earth, four top 10 open finishes in the last five years. The only athlete who's done that. And in the year that he had an off year, he was 12th. And we've talked about Jeff Adler over and over, over the past several months that this guy doesn't matter if it's online, in person, off season, you know, whatever. 
when he shows up, he's as consistent across the board in any style of competition over the last four or five years as anyone in the sport and continuing to show that class um, with another great open finish for him. Anyway, Chad Schroeder, great follow, uh, great resource. I met him at the 2018 CrossFit Games at the regionals that year. All three regionals I went to, multiple people were like, oh, you need to meet Chad Schroeder. And by the time I was done with three weeks, I was like, who the heck is this guy? I uh, went to the games, met him there. We walked around the campus for an hour and talked like old friends, like you know, probably not surprising for one of us, but it was kind of like, like finding your your brother that you you know you never knew. Um, and, Similar brains. And still to this day, you know, I can always reach out to Chad, and he's happy to help me out if he can. Yeah, he's a good guy. Good guy. Good guy. He's good definitely guy. a he's under underutilized resource at CrossFit, by the way. Just my opinion, my popular opinion. But uh, Brian, you sent me this earlier today, and I was wow. Um, <laughs> Yes, and I know Halpin. I think Halpin reposted this. I may have seen one or two other people as well. I saw this this morning. Um, this is what it says. Hampton Morris uh, smashes a 170 kilo clean and jerk world record in USA's first senior world record in 55 years. I can't remember how much he weighs, but I think it's like 136 pounds or something like that. It says he's a 61, which means he's, yeah, he's less than 140. Um, <clears throat> and he's like 20 years old. So this is insane. You know, USA weightlifting does not show up on the international scale or map that often. Um, and I think it came across my feed because Matt DiLorenzo reposted it because he's wearing tier lifters, which is kind of cool. Of course. Of course he is. Oh, freak, I love that. That just gets me so hyped up. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. So, I mean, it's an incredible <laughs> accomplishment. It's cool for USA weightlifting. It's cool for tier. And I thought it would be just a kind of a fun thing to give an acknowledgement to here on the show today. Good for you, Hampton. Three reds, come on. Just three reds. Another thing that popped up on my uh, radar this morning, Harriet Roberts used to compete competitively out of Australia, teams, individual. Uh, she's had a good career and she puts this question out here, which I think is a decent question for people to ask. Bella, I wanted to get your opinion on it. I don't think there's necessarily a right or a wrong, it's just different ways of thinking. Does labeling everyone as an athlete in CrossFit create an identity crisis? So great question. I think it's the connotation versus the denotation of the word athlete. Ooh. So you have people in functional fitness who they're training like athletes. Okay, cool. They're training like athletes. That does not mean they are athletes in the professional sense. And like, you know what I mean? I think if you're training as, as an athlete, you are doing things sporty, sports specific, strength, aerobic capacity, things like that. But I think if the question is, does it create an identity crisis? No. But what does create an identity crisis is what we kind of already talked about is why do so many people think that they belong in the professional side of the sport or who told them that that's really the goal who told people when you start cross it your goal should be to go to the games why isn't it yes my goal with cross it is to be the fittest possible version of myself that i can possibly be if i have a competitive desire and a competitive edge cool there is opportunity for me but there are still you know there's an avenue to be a professional athlete and, you know, I could call myself a CrossFit athlete and people that don't understand the sport see that I train CrossFit and like, oh, you're an athlete. And when I say, oh, no, I'm not, they don't understand what I mean. But what I mean by no, I'm not is I am not in any way in the same conversation as Harriet Roberts, as the athletes at Invictus or any of these actual competitors. I think now if everybody's going to call themselves athletes and that's what we're going to say we're training like maybe competitors is a better word to use when it comes to, you know, these are the CrossFit Games competitors. Yes, they are athletes, but these are the ones that are actually competing for money, sponsorships, titles. It's a weird it's a weird thing because I think everybody wants to fit in and I think something that CrossFit has done well is 
create a very inclusive community where everybody can do CrossFit and everybody is an athlete. And that's beautiful and amazing. And that's one of the best things about CrossFit as a sport. But at the same time, just because everybody can do CrossFit and has opportunity to be competitive doesn't mean they are in the competitive elite. And I think in within the like the world of CrossFit and people who are familiar with the season, the sport, the language that we use, you can qualify that. Like I could say, I'm an open. Yeah. I'm an open. Yeah. Do the open every year. That's my athletic pursuit within the sport. Um, yep. I'm a quarterfinals athlete. I made it to quarterfinals. And now I, if I say this, you have an understanding. Oh, you did well in the open. You're advancing to the next stage. I'm a fringe semifinals athlete. Okay, I'm competing for a spot at semifinals. That is, now you're talking about something pretty serious. I'm a perennial semifinals athlete. Okay, you're legit. I'm a games yeah. athlete. That, you know, and each one of these things carries a little bit of a different note. Um, I think that if she's, you know, if, so if she's talking about uh, <laughs> the sport, you can add in, yeah, I'm a games athlete, semifinal athlete, whatever. And that can just identify a little bit in the caliber. If you're talking about at the community level, you know, I might go coach the class tonight. I'm not going to say, all right, athletes, come on into the board. I don't know what that means to everybody necessarily. Some right? people I mean, like that though. And a lot of people, enjoy CrossFit because they feel like they're athletes. Like the first comment on there is as someone who was never, who was not an athlete growing up and I found fitness in my thirties, it's empowering to call myself an athlete. And I love that. And I never want anyone to feel that just because they were not labeled as an athlete growing up, that they can't find themselves having some sort of athletic moment or athletic journey because we all do. It just means different things. And you know, again, it just goes back to it, the connotation versus denotation of athlete. It's different. And if you're a coach and you're, you know, wondering about this, you know, you take this person, Jamie Hamlin, for example, if she's a member at your affili affiliate, it'd be great to have that understanding that she feels empowered yeah. by being known as an athlete so that when she comes out as a, uh, you know, a question in the gym or she's like, I'm not sure if I can do this or not, we'll talk about, you know, we can frame it based on what we know about her to make it into yeah. something that's going to be helpful. But there may be someone else in the same class that if you ca call them an athlete, that that's intimidating for them. And so yeah. at the, at the uh, relationship level as a coach within your gym or your group of people, this is why you want to get to know those people, to have some kind of understanding about what language works for them or doesn't work for them. And I can certainly understand why this question is being asked. Judy brings up a, you know, a, nice, point, a nice point there. Um, but it's all coming back to kind of the same things. Um, competitor. An athlete might mean the same thing to some people. It might mean very different to someone else, like like Judy's saying. So, being just uh, aware of who you're talking about and how you're saying those things, but also if you know uh, if you're a member at an at a gym or you're going to an affiliate or something like that, um, it's okay to communicate with your coach. Hey, you know, for me, that's a little bit of an intimidating word. Let them know that so that they can you know communicate it with you in a way that's going to be effective for you know whatever your pursuits are. I also think a lot of times. When it comes to, she, you know, she uses the word identity. If that's what you're claiming, that's, there's got to be more to it than that. You know, if you're claiming I, my identity is a CrossFit athlete and you have never made semifinals, maybe we reevaluate. I have made my entire, you know, my life is the sport of CrossFit, but I'm not an athlete. And I try to remind people that when we're in conversation, I do CrossFit. I live and breathe the media. I'm at most of the major competitions, but I am not a CrossFit athlete. I do CrossFit and CrossFit is my lifestyle, but I'm just a personality here in the space. <clears throat> I would not have what I have without the CrossFit athletes. And mayhem That's athlete. That's my perspective. And mayhem athlete. And specifically <laughs> Dom. Oh, specifically Coach Dom. Dom. Coach Dom. Well put. Any other uh, topics on the agenda today? Yes, I said I was going to do this, but it's it's a guilty pleasure. I came home on Monday, or no Sunday, and I I don't know. I was just I just wanted to watch something, just be dumb. I heard about this, Brian. Have you heard about the Physical One Hundred? I have. Okay, so season two started. Uh, I think there's seven episodes in, but uh. Yeah, it's 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 very this. I mean, last year a CrossFitter from Korea won it. It's a Korean-based show, but um, yeah, I'm 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 hooked. Uh, this is the first event they had a they put a hundred air runners out there, a hundred air runners, 
And what they did is they eliminated 50. They just had times. They ran 10 minutes for distance. And then the 50, you know, shortest times they eliminated. Well, not completely, but they just, they dropped out. And, uh, and then they did, uh, I think a seven minute and then a five minute, but it was just fun to watch. And that was the first event. And, uh, and there was quite a few CrossFit athletes there. I think last year, Carlos, uh, Carlos, uh, I always screw up his last okay. name. Yeah. He was on this last year. Um, but, uh, That's, they'll bring a bunch of different guys. They'll bring dancers, football players. Uh, yes. well, that's a motto right there. He's the CrossFitter right there. And she's the CrossFitter as well. That girl right there. Yeah, you can never of, tell. They have all. They all have their but, shirts uh, on. It's a really cool oh, show. There we go. He's a he's a CrossFitter yeah. for sure. No, they're not all CrossFitters. Well, no, so some of these guys are just yeah. bodybuilders. Just a variety no. of stuff. It's the joke because they're taking their shirt off before the workout starts. That's how you know you're. Ah, oh, I got you. Like that guy. Obvious. He's a UFC. Yeah. Oh, he's a former UFC fighter. Yeah, he's a UFC fighter. He was like the greatest Korean UFC fighter ever. Uh, the stun gun, but uh. And that guy's uh, there. Yeah, it's uh, every aspect. They had actors. They had some guys. I think one of the uh, the American on there. He's an actor that just does Korean shows. But um, but no, uh, I thought it's, it's really fun. I enjoy it. So if you're looking for something that's just kind of fun to watch, and you know you like watching fitness and stuff like that, it's pretty cool. Sh pretty cool show. Jake Jeff applied to be an, a contestant in the season three. Who did? Jake Chapman, yeah, who made a uh, comment earlier today about. Oh him. yeah, we're well, a good, good, yeah, Jake. I hope so. Yeah. Um, the physique, right, though. Yeah, I mean that's what it's based on. It's just not. It's not fitness. It's a physique. Like they said, it's like we're trying to find the what physique is the best physique. So that's why they bring in all these different disciplines. So and what it is, they make these molds of people's chests, and you know. Some of them have six pack abs, some don't, but, um, and it, it's both men and women. They don't have separate divisions. They're all the group together. So, um, I love that. yeah, so it's pretty cool. I, I think you'll, and I think finally, uh, this is something myself, Chad and Sebastian are working on is if you're not familiar with the content lab podcast, <clears throat> it's a podcast that, um, our buddy, Carlos, Carlos bone, uh, he, um, one of the, best content creators out there you might you're if you've seen any tier mayhem or hwpo more than likely he's done it but he has a podcast where he brings content creators on and we're uh yeah he employed some of us to kind of help help with the rebrand so next week uh we're gonna reintroduce the content lab podcast a whole new uh like a rebranding of sort and we've got some exciting guests coming on just not in just crossfit we're looking at just like you know, I think Carlos is looking at bringing like movie producers and directors and just like any anyone that creates content. So keep an eye out for that. that. Um, and uh, it'd be cool if you, everyone. I think it's really cool. I mean, he's had he's had Heber, he's had Mars on there. Uh, I was on there once, um, but he brings in a you know he's but he's trying to expand. So yeah, love that. But Bella, what's coming up for you? I'm actually leaving tomorrow to go to Fargo, North Dakota for oh, Able Games. Dad? Oh, no, Able no, Games. No, for right. Able Games. Yeah, that's right. Guess yesterday was, is going there as well. Everybody's going. It's so it's always really fun. I think a lot of people um, within our sport are a little bit more charity-minded and philanthropic than they let on. And so it's really fun to see people, you know, bigger names that are showing up to help out. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in Fargo, North Dakota. And it's... It is one of my favorite weekends of the year. I do get to see my dad. He is driving out there. So I'm super stoked for that. But it's also this event every year. Like I, I'm missing out on the Ellis Katie one year anniversary party. Every Everything we have planned for this week. I'm missing everything because of Able wow. Games. Because it is that special. Um, I wouldn't miss it. So. Yeah. So the guys are on yesterday. He and O'Keefe are going for I think the fifth time. Um, they very similarly positive things. About. Yeah, they weren't there last year. Um, yeah, I think I had said they were coming and they, they didn't show up last year, but glad but they're coming back. Was, I think it was because of his knee. He had a cancer Probably. pretty much. Everywhere. Yeah, like kind of last minute. He thought he was going to be able to, but this it's caused a lot of problems. Um, yeah. Speaking of Fraser, if you haven't yet, uh, check out our interview with Fraser. Uh, hopefully you see a different kind of a 
a different side of him. I know um, he doesn't do many podcasts, and when he does, he usually doesn't do that many podcasts in the space. So it was really cool to have him on and catch up, and uh, you know, um, hopefully we'll have him on again or see more of him in the space, especially as the season picks up. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's cool. Oh, Bella. So uh, before you go, you you yes. there was a competition this past weekend that you were working with. Yeah, Hypercon Games. It's hosted by um, Austin Alexander and Hunter McIntyre. So if mm. you know High Rocks, you know Hunter. And they're putting on, they're trying to create essentially a place for hybrid athletes to go. That is not CrossFit. It's not High Rocks. It's a blend. It's its own thing. And so that's what they're trying to build right now is what does it look like for hybrid athletes to compete? And they threw down on Saturday. They had over 20 athletes um, come through and compete. Emily Lugman competed. Um, her teammate, Phil, also competed. Uh, Carly Wopat ended up winning. She's a high rocks athlete. She's that her full-time job is to be a professional hybrid athlete. So it's, it was really fun. Um, the workouts themselves were pretty, pretty gnarly and it rained all day and they still made them run a mile in the rain downtown in San Diego. That's just, that's Hunter right there. That's what he's going to make you do. So it's fun to be a part of that. And I mean, they're good guys and they're trying to build something good. So I'm happy to support them in that. You're going to compete? Right. Yeah. Me? <laughs> yeah, you're a hybrid athlete. Actually, you're actually, I did agree to compete this year at something. Dom <laughs> and I are going to do this thing where he's going to commentate and I'm going to do the fitness. So we're going to swap roles. So if you have any competitions in mind, let me know. We're down to go anywhere. So we're, we're going to figure this out. Oh, the year oh, for they're, Bella and Dom. I want to be at that competition, <laughs> whatever it is. I know that's what I was saying. I was You're like, if it. we come out with that, like that'll be that'll be wild. <laughs> so yeah. uh, there was there was something I forgot to bring up. Sorry, I know this is a longer show, but a lot, like I said, a lot of stuff happened this week. Um, and Bella kind of reminded me of this. Was mayhem? Oh, let me bring this up. Oh, the Hero Games. June 22nd. Come out. Yeah. Come on. So you know, those aren't only Hero Games. It's uh, last year when CrossFit decided not to um, um, do an occupational games, Mayhem, which if everyone knows, they're very supportive of first responders, military members. So they came, invented something called the Hero Games, and it was pretty popular. So this year, they're bringing it back. This year, Angelo is actually in charge of it. You know, Angelo, if people know Angelo, he's a he's a, he's a full-time firefighter. That's a full-time job. So he's kind of heading that up, doing the programming. There you see Angelo right there. But, um, yeah, so this year it's a pretty cool format. Um, uh, will take place online May 1st to the 6th. And then uh, the winners of the – the hero division which is like the rx elite division uh those in each one of the i guess whether it be firefighter medical or whatever they'll be invited for a one day in-person team competition uh, at mayhem on june 22nd and uh they'll name the fittest everyday heroes so um I if you're a first responder or know anyone military member or whatever uh head to the mayhem website or mayhem instagram they have a link tree up there you know show you the registration there are prizes uh, for every division, I think uh, there's cash prizes for the hero division. I believe there are uh, regular prizes like in terms of like merchandise and stuff for the other divisions as well. So, um, yeah, make sure you head on over there. Uh, I think it's really cool. I'm having I'm, I sent this to Ava. Ava won the women's military last year. She got a thousand dollars and a barbell out of it. So she's like, I'm aiming. For, she wants to defend her title as the as the as the hero games women's military champion. So, Love yeah. That. So. Yeah, make sure you head and do that. Uh, one second. Oh, here we go. Speaking of reps ahead. One second. Bella and Brian on the mic. Dynamic duo for our next event. Uh oh, Brian. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm down for it. It's just difficult. To, you got so much on your calendar. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're traveling yeah. more than me this year. How many times Bella and these? Up, it seems like you're going to. Good. What's up? Are you going to this Hero Games? I'd like to. I was actually talking. You guys watched 24.3, the hero that everyone was in love with, Troy. We were actually talking about it the other day. He's like, I want to go. And I said, okay, if you go, I want to go. So 
I'm going to try to make it out there. And then I actually texted Dom about it yesterday and I said, I want to come out to Hero Games. So it's on my calendar tentatively because I think it'd be really fun and, you know, being out with Mayhem on my people. So, yeah, well, I'll definitely yeah. be there. Me out in Tennessee. If Phil, yeah. if Phil won the interview, I would love to do it with you. Yeah. I and it. Phil, if you need a photographer, you know, or someone to be your hype man, I'm there too. <laughs> um, but hey, yeah, see, that's... call me Drake. Yep. Yep. I could be, I can MC for you guys. I would love to hear Brian and Bella kind of on the, on the broadcast, you know, I think that'd be cool, but um, cool. All right. That's, that's all I got. I got stuff to do. I'm sure you guys got stuff to do. Bella, you got to go running, don't you? Or you're a ran. I got to run club. No, I'm, I got to run club tonight. Mm -hmm. I run 5k every Wednesday. No big deal. Mm -hmm. There is. Okay. Here's what I'll leave you guys with. Oh, so gosh. I, hmm. I don't think that I'm competitive at things that I'm not good at, or I say that, I claim that, and then I join a run club. And for some reason, I, I always go with my friends who also do CrossFit. And so we always, we go in and we're like, oh, we're not gonna run very fast. We'll hold on to the back of the pack. There's 300 plus runners every single week. We mob the it's streets huge, of Pacific it's Beach. Huge. It's massive, it's massive. And every week we're like, no, we'll be at the back of the pack, no worries. Sure enough, well, I think it was last week we were with the pacer in the front. We're just jogging, just having a good time running. And I look at her and I said, so is there like a prize for winning this? Like, you know, just being at the front, like, do I get a medal? Do I get a shirt that says one? And she's like, nope, you just kind of just run. There's nothing in it. You're just doing it for you. And it's so funny to me because I think it was a joke. I was obviously kidding. Um, but it is so fun to do things that I'm bad at. And running, especially, you know, 5K is not something that I would say that I'm good at. So it's fun to just put myself out there. You keep doing it every week. You're going to get good at it. I'm actually not that bad. Okay, so I'm not that bad at running, but I just don't like it, if that's fair. I'm the same way. It's not a barbell. Like, you know, I'm yeah. just not a barbell. Have you loved running. Who, me? Yeah. I love running because I'm good at it, not because I love it because I'm awesome at it. Or, I mean, it's because it's required. It's like if someone's like, hey, PC, go play video games or run, I'm going to go play video games, you know. <laughs> or APC, hey, you know. Yeah, do, you know, if I'm given options of fun things to do, running's bottom of the list. I do it because I'm, I'm somewhat decent at it. So, I feel you know, that. but that's about it. But uh, yeah, uh, again, shout out HGR, CBD, 20% for off your CBD products. Use Friend20. Uh, Carl, thanks again for supporting us. Um, we got a lot, of, uh, hopefully some cool things planned with uh, HGR here coming coming up in the season. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in on the chat. Thanks for all the support. We have a show tomorrow. Again, um, we are be, we're assessing the women's. North America East field. And um, Brian, we already have an article up if you want to do some read ahead, some research. Um, but we have a, uh, Alexis uh, Detroit will be joining us. Uh, she's an expert in that field. She's competed against a lot of these, these women in the Northeast or North American East. And uh, she's going to be, she's diligent. She's doing her research. So we're, we're looking forward to having her on. So, but that's about it. So we'll see you guys or everyone, not guys, ladies and gents tomorrow. And as always, be friendly, our friends. <laughs>